American Recovery and Reinvestment uh, Act made $650 million in prevention and wellness funding available for chronic disease prevention and management. And this year, when Congress passed the Affordable Care Act, it included a $15 billion prevention and public health fund, of which $500 million is, uh, I believe, available uh, this year. And as I understand it, these new funds are not restricted to, to chronic diseases, but are meant to fund the entire spectrum of public health efforts. I've been told that your office is currently working on a system to distribute the funds this year. However, there, is, there seems to be significant concern in the infectious disease community that in an effort to obligate the $500 million by September 30th of this year, the department will fund only existing grant applications for the uh, era uh, chronic prevention grants and that infectious disease programs will once again receive uh, no funding. Uh, can you please uh, outline how you plan to allocate these funds and whether you will include uh, new applications for prevention funds to target infectious diseases such as HIV AIDS, viral hepatitis, sexually transmitted diseases, tuber uh, tuberculosis, w uh, many of which are at crisis levels in many communities, and what strategies is your department undertaking to address these infectious dis uh, disease disparities in our minority communities? Um, Congresswoman, I, I would suggest that at this point, as you um, have identified, conversations are, are going on with um, members of uh, the House and the Senate uh, about the um, strategies for allocating these funds. So uh, no decisions uh, have been made um, at this point about either using traditional applications or not, but we absolutely want that kind of input uh, and, you know, look forward to working with you on a plan. Um, I, I think that the effort will be to actually build on, as you know, the investment in the ARA funds was really a first time ever investment in wellness and prevention and strategically um, focused, uh, at least in the community grant applications, on uh, two underlying causes of um, chronic disease, which were tobacco cessation and obesity. Um, this is likely to be a broader area. There are lots of ideas and good strategies about how to use this. We're looking carefully at the scientific data, at the evidence-based programs. I, I can guarantee you that will be one of the guiding lights is what, what actually has been demonstrated to work. But, but I would say that discussion is very much underway, and we appreciate your we. So, so they're still yes. still open with regards to yes. uh, funding infectious disease. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> as you are aware, the the United States spends more on maternity care than any other country in the world. However, we rank 41st uh, in the world in maternal mortality, and rank 30th in infant mortality. While we know there is an extensive body of research regarding best evidence-based practices in maternity care, our health care providers seem to be uh, not to be following uh, that research. For example, despite Healthy People 2010 goals of reducing cesarean births to 15%, the United States continues to have a 31.8% cesarean section rate. Given the, the risks that are associated with medically unnecessary cesareans and the extraordinary costs associated with cesarean births, is the administration doing anything to refine our care system to support the best and most cost-effective evidence-based care to reduce uh, the rate of C-sections. Um, Congresswoman, I, I'm not sure I can speak with any specificity about what actions are currently being taken um, in dialogue with providers about the C-section um, rate beyond just publishing the data and highlighting the data, I can tell you that our Office of Women's Health is very focused on uh, maternal and child health issues and, frankly, what are pretty dismal health results, as you suggest, uh, high expenditure and not um, terrifically good results. I, again, think that 
The Affordable Care Act makes a big step in the direction of getting affable prenatal care to pregnant women. That, that will be a major step forward. It, 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 I'm sorry to interrupt because I see my time's up, but I did want to know whether or not, since the uh, new law uh, requires Medicare to cover care provided in all freestanding birth centers um, at, at a cost of uh, $6,000 less, uh, are, is there any consideration in the initiatives to increase the availability of licensed birthing centers across the country? Is that being looked at? I, I can't answer that, but I will look into it. Thank, okay, thank I, you. Thank, 